Gigabyte sent me their Aorus Z270X Gaming 7 board. To make it clear, Aorus is the brand that is replacing Extreme Gaming and G1, so if you see a motherboard or a graphics card or anything else from Gigabyte uh, with the Aorus logo, then you know that's kind of the highest end one they do. On the back of the box, as usual, there's all the new features like RGB Fusion and Smart Fan 5, and inside the box you get a couple of temperature sensors, which is really nice for overclocking. You also get an LED uh, sort of extension wire, uh, and you also get the usual stuff like rear I.O. shield, SLI bridges, SATA cables, and motherboard manual, and all that sort of stuff. The board itself is definitely aesthetically pleasing. If you're looking for a motherboard purely just to fit in with your sort of stylized build, then this one is quite nice. Obviously, it does uh, prominently feature AORS branding on both the Rario cover, uh, and the chipset heatsink. Speaking a little bit about the features, you do have two M.2 slots as well as the Turbo B clock, which is great for overclocking. And this board is actually very capable of overclocking as well, which is very nice. You also have reinforced PCI slots on all of the x16 slots which is nice and you have an rgbw or red green blue white header which is actually reprogrammable as well so you can plug in any uh, led strip and in theory it should work you also have uh, i believe eight uh, fan headers all four pin pwm although they're smart fan headers so if you plug in a three pin it will change the voltage which is quite nice and you also have the reinforced uh, ram slots with the leds in between them your, in terms of storage, you also have uh, the U.2 connector as well as either three SATA Express ports or six normal SATA ports, which is generally plenty enough for you anyway, and of course you do have those two M.2 slots as well. The rear audio is quite nice with USB 2, USB 3, USB Type-C, Gigabit Ethernet in both killer and uh, Intel forms, and a very nice audio setup too. Obviously this board is very stylistic, does have a whole load of LEDs on it, and you can change those in both the Windows program and in the BIOS as well, so you can completely turn them off if you like, or you can you know, change them to, to match your graphics card or uh, the LEDs in your system or anything else, so that's quite nice. Speaking a little bit about the BIOS, for me the aesthetic and ease of use isn't as nice as some of the other options, uh, but it is very in-depth, especially when it goes uh, when it comes to overclocking. They do a great job of all the overclocking options, and of course you can still use stuff like SmartFan 5 uh, inside the BIOS and also the RGB Fusion uh, if you just want to do some relatively basic adjustments, although you can use the Windows application as well if you want more in-depth control. Either way, it's quite a nice BIOS, obviously does have the nice set sort of slide out features on the side uh, and yeah it's quite cool. I actually got to spend some time overclocking on this on the board which is actually really nice and it's actually fairly easy. There are a couple things that I would like to see improved especially on the BIOS UI and overclocking front and that is the, the, the first thing that you look at when you look at the overclocking tab in the BIOS is just a list of sub menus. If you want to change the base clock or the multiplier or the core, vo core voltage or even just turn on XMP you need to navigate through multiple sub menus to get to those things. It'd be really nice if at least those uh, you know main sort of settings run the sort of front page there that would be really nice and a very nice and easy usability change that would make the BIOS UI just a little bit easier to use. Of course the board is quite stylish with a whole load of LEDs it is certainly something that might be an acquired taste but of course uh, you can turn off the LEDs both in the BIOS and in the Windows software too uh, and same with the Smart Fan 5 software each uh, fan header is smart which means if you plug in a three pin fan header it should change the voltage for you to be able to drop the speed uh, and of course if you're using 4-pin fans and it'll use PWM and you can change that in both the BIOS and in the Windows software and I believe you can also fully turn off fans as well which is quite nice. Of course this is something that uh, the AI suites, uh, you know, ASUS boards have had for a little while but it's still nice to see this functionality on uh, Gigabyte boards too. Otherwise the only real cons that I have for the board is uh, of course as I said the BIOS UI it could do with a little bit of uh, tweaking and it's just sort of usability aspect uh, just to make it a little bit easier for noobs like me who want to overclock. Uh, that would be quite nice and otherwise I've listed no Wi-Fi here just because uh, well the dual gigabit ethernet is really nice and of course you can't uh, team them here but still nice to have that option uh, it is uh, you know not having Wi-Fi does slightly exclude some of the market although of course you can just pick up a Wi-Fi uh, you know PCIe card or USB adapter so it's not a massive problem it's just something that might be a nice addition to see for a lot of people otherwise in terms of scoring I think I'm going to go for a 4.5 money I'm going to go with a 5 for performance and I think a 4.5 for functionality 
difficulty. We're going to go with a 4.5 for style with a 4.5 Tectum DB score and a gold award as well. It's a very nice motherboard that I do highly recommend it if you're after a Z270 motherboard. It's at a fairly nice price point while still not being as ridiculously high as some others, but of course not being uh, the cheapest uh, of the bunch. Of course, there are plenty of other ASUS and MSI options for you to check out. Uh, if you are just watching this video, you can go check out the 7700K review that's gone up at the same time as this one. Uh, and if you stick around for the next few days, I'm going to be doing a video a day on different Z1, uh, Z270 motherboards the boards from ASUS, MSI and another uh, one or two from Gigabyte as well. So uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of that really. Um, if you enjoy the video and feel uh, that I have helped you in your purchasing decision or just helped entertain you for any reason, then feel free to hit the like button, let me know in the comments down below and subscribe. If you want to pick up one of these motherboards, unfortunately if you're watching this on the first couple days of this video going live, you can't actually pick one of these up yet, but once you do, I'll leave a link to my Overclockers UK affiliate link if you want to help me out, and my Amazon UK affiliate link if you prefer to buy from Amazon or you're just not in the UK. Otherwise, as I said, feel free to like and subscribe. Also follow me on Facebook and Twitter as well for more updates and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and otherwise, uh, that's pretty much that really. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next one, probably tomorrow for another motherboard review.